Welcome back to I Am So Healthy That Amen. My Friends Are Envious. Amen. <laughs> I got perfected health. Amen. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> we are part two of how to have perfect health, how to have good health. Amen. Healthy diet and exercise and sleep and you know, how do you do that and how do you get your mind in a frame that these things just effortlessly happen in your life? Yeah, it's all about, you know, how we kicked off part one of this. It's about getting your attention off of yourself and putting all your attention onto Christ because it's that gift of righteousness we talked about. He's the one that's given us health, that by his stripes we are healed. And we saw also in First Peter that we are, we were and we are healed. Right. So either way, we already got it. Either way. We, we got it. Whichever yeah. way you want to look at it, whichever way you try to dissect it, go backwards, sideways, forward, back, whatever, you're already whole and healed Amen. because of what he did. So when you can get a revelation of that, that it all comes from him, you receive that gift of righteousness, then that's when you can have that effortless transformation to do the things you're, that we need to do about talking about eating right, sleeping right, and exercising right. You are set up for success. Amen. So. Let's get right into it. Okay, so a couple of practical ways on how to improve your diet. Number one, avoid sugar or cut out sugar. Big problem in changing your metabolism and changing your blood sugar levels and all that, so avoid sugar. Number two, small frequent meals. You know, not waiting five hours until you eat your next meal, then you're so hungry you wanna eat everything in the refrigerator. Small frequent meals, like every hour and a half, every two hours. Next one is increasing liquid meals or meal sub substitutes. like smoothies, protein bars, that type of thing, snacks in between your meals because they're easy, they're quick. And that's one reason why people won't eat correctly and stay on a regiment where they're eating a couple hours because I don't have the time or I don't have the ability. I go to work at eight, I don't have time to noon. So in the middle of that, you can drink a protein drink out of a box that you put in the refrigerator, you can eat a bar, whatever it may be. There's substitutes out there that will really help you. So moving on to the next one, Rita Baca two and two for us. Habakkuk 2 and 2, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. So writing down a diet plan, writing down an exercise plan, Habakkuk says right there, write it down. Right. So that's why it's important you say, you know, how do I do this? How do I make my schedule whatever? Write it down and then make adjustments for it. I would start, the first thing I would write down is I am lean, I am perfected in my health. Christ died for my... Well, and that's a great way to change your mind and we just did declarations on that so you can go back to our youtube teaching there's one on good health if it's exactly what it talks about yeah is those good. things so now let's move on to exercise <laughs> go ahead and read first timothy 4 and 8 for us i'd say you got this down first timothy 4 and 8 amplified for physical training is of some value but godliness spiritual training is of value in everything and in every way since it holds promise for the present life and for the life to come Okay, so what's great about this is it says that physical training is of some value. It doesn't say of no value, right? right. It says of some value. But what's most important? The spiritual training. So and that's what we started off with here. Let's put the foundation of, on this that you know, your health, everything you have comes through Christ. That's the spiritual foundation. That's more important than believing in all these things. So that's what we did. So, but physical training does have some value. So you should do some, if it has value to it, you should incorporate it into your life. Exercise. So exercise helps to do a number of things. Number one, it helps to improve your sleep. It's gonna help you fall asleep quicker. Let me tell you what, the days that I work out hard and have a busy day, it's like you lay down and you're tired. If you don't, it's like, you seem like you've got this extra energy, or whatever. So it's going to improve your sleep. So if you're having sleeping problems, you're not exercising or incorporate exercise. Number two, it helps eliminate stress. It helps produce endorphins and different chemicals and things that are going to help you to reduce it from a chemical perspective in your body. But it's also just a time that you can unplug from everything. You can listen to a teaching. Like every single time that I'm in our gym, I'm watching teachings. So not only am I working on my physical tent, I'm working on my spirituality too. So I'm double hitting it. You know, I'm multitasking. So you can do the same thing but it's going to help you to unplug from the world. And then if you can do that and then be working physically and then doing all the things that's gonna be the chemical changes in your body, then you're gonna to help to eliminate stress. Number three is that it helps to maintain our 
balanced weight or our ideal weight. It's gonna help because it's gonna burn more calories. You know, people say, what's this, the secret to losing weight? There's no secret. Eat less, exercise more. It's a, it's a number game, it's a caloric value. It's like, burn more calories than you're sticking in your pie hole. Period, that's it. That's the secret. <laughs> yeah, but people want, what? Hey, what, what about that special pill? What about that, that special diet? <laughs> oh, you know? well, the first secret is see yourself lean, see yourself healthy, see yourself as Christ made you to be, and then effortlessly you will implement all these things to then be the ideal weight and character that you imagine yourself to be. So just remember too that, you know, being overweight can lead to all other types of physical problems, COPD, heart problems, diabetes, all these other type of things. And they typically stem or the root of those is being overweight. You know, the whole thing in COVID, they said that people who had these underlying symptoms were more vulnerable to catch it. But where did those, the root of that come from? Being overweight. So a lot of times when people can control the weight, then COPD isn't really an issue because their bodies aren't working as hard to try to breathe because they don't have all the extra weight. Mm -hmm. Diabetes, they get their diet cleaned up, the diabetes goes away, so that can solve a lot of things. Even aches and pains like in your body, sometimes if you're carrying too much weight, like your knee will give out or your uh, whatever, your leg or your arm or something will... Uh, Anyway, that's another uh, issue. Yeah, it's a very good friend of mine who has gone back and forth from gaining weight and losing weight, and he hikes mountains, like eight, 10 mile hikes when he starts to get into losing that. And he's gone from like 240 to 210. And he's like, man, when I get to 210, I can really fly up that mountain. I was like, just think, if you take a 30 or 40 pound weight, you know, like a weight you're gonna put on a barbell or something, you know, put that in a backpack and <laughs> carry it around and then take the backpack off and see the difference. That's what it's like carrying 40 pounds of extra weight or whatever it may be, yeah. even 10 pounds. I mean, we walk into the grocery store last few days because we were doing some work, having some work on our house. It's like, when you're just carrying a few bags of groceries after a mile, you're like, oh, <laughs> you know? That's so true. think about just how those little groceries oh, are when you put all that, all that weight on your body, yeah. whether it's you know, on your back or in the front of you or wherever it is, you got a big tummy out here and you're hanging over and it's pulling on your back and everything else, like, good night. Yeah. You know? That's so. Good. Okay, moving on. Number three, good sleep. Go ahead and read Proverbs 3.24. Proverbs 3.24, New King James Version. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Okay, so that word sweet in Hebrew means pleasant. So you have a promise from the Word of God that your sleep will be sweet. Your, your sleep will be pleasant. It's not a promise from the pharmaceutical company. It's not a promise from any of the other things that it may be. It's a promise from God yeah. that you're going to have sweet sleep. So one thing I declare every single night, thank you, Lord, that I have sweet sleep, period, that my household experience sweet sleep. Mm -hmm. So I'm declaring that over our lives before we even get in bed every night because that's a promise. I take it. I receive it. Right. And I sleep good every night. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and read from Psalms 127. Psalm 127 2. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. So once again, you're having a promise of sleep, but yeah. look at what it's saying here about rising up early and going to bed too late. Once again, getting your sleeping on a schedule. So like if you're staying up until two o'clock in the morning, it's gonna be hard to get up at five in the morning, be productive. <laughs> so sometimes we're gonna to have to make an adjustment in our schedule and you can actually train your sleeping patterns just like you can your eating patterns the same way. You so can. it might take some adjustment to be able to do that, but it can be done. So, you know, it's, it's a part of almost training just like you are training your physical body, you know, in the gym or whatever it is. It's, you can train yourself to sleep just like you can train yourself to eat right and wake up. You can set your own internal alarm clock so every morning you're waking up at the same time. And that's another thing that when you're well rested and you before you go to bed, I mean you can and I would say try it, exercise it, exercise that faith in seeing yourself waking up at a certain time without having to use your alarm clock. And if you're new to this, I would say set your alarm clock just to see and then pray before you go to bed, Lord, I just ask that when I would wake up, I would be refreshed and that you would wake me up at 5 a.m. so I would have quiet time with you and then just try it a few times and give it like at least a week 
and watch like your internal clock will begin to start to change and things will begin to work out to your advantage I haven't used alarm clock in 20 years probably we get up anywhere from three to five every day and if we are if I am traveling I got to catch a flight I do exactly say Lord I need to get up at this time whatever and it'll wake me up and when we do some we go through like fasting we'll do a fast whatever it's like I'll wake up at 3 or 301 every single day because I'm spending that time and it's like because I get my body I say I want to get up early at this time to do that and it's like it's like clockwork and you can train yourself like you said too to 4 430 whatever it may be all right so how do we then ways to help improve sleep we just talked about one train yourself mm -hmm. sleeping patterns number two that um, exercise will also help to do that as well too. It'll help you to sleep better and we already talked about that. Mm -hmm. Number three is read before you're going to bed. Because reading, I don't know why it does, but something like I'm trying to read this big thick book right now by a Jewish rabbi and I try, like to read it in the afternoon and after like four or five pages like I feel like going to sleepy town. <laughs> you know? But it's the same way. It helps to relax you. You know, there's something about doing that that's going to help you so that's another good way plus it's going to unplug you from everything in the world if you're reading something that has value to it some book that has goodness to it like the bible's a good one that might be a good one to read right. or, you know, it's getting your mind off of whatever else you're doing especially if you're watching some movie that you know shoot them up bang bang right. <laughs> blow it up <laughs> on blowing things up before you go to bed but also if you're trying to read to your children you're trying to put your children down to bed money is easy is a great book to read for your children and as you get to reading it, they, oh, it's like a lullaby. You just put some it's a sales pitch? <laughs> no, it's just a fact. Oh, okay. <laughs> Amen. All right. So remember, three things to help you live healthy, help you basically honor what Jesus has already done for yes. you, to honor your body, to honor that temple. One, number one, diet. Get your diet in control whatever way that may be maybe it's not it's always about losing weight it can be about gaining weight it can be about maintaining maybe your maybe you got your ideal weight but you just want to have a healthy eater eating style so number one diet number two exercise number three sleep do those three things do the different types of things we do and remember to keep your attention on Christ Christ is the one that's giving you your health. He's the one that's giving you your riches. He's the one that's giving you your protection. He's the one that's giving you your peace, everything. Keep your attention on him. Receive the gift of righteousness through him, and that will allow you to do all of these things effortlessly. Amen. Woo! <laughs> Isn't it nice when you just take it all off yourself and you just focus on Christ and just receive? So I say it's the gift of righteousness. It's a gift. What do you do with the gift? I say, Here's this gift for you, honey. What do you do? Thank you. Put your hands out and take it, right? You just take it. Easy peasy do. chicken grease. I'm not going to need my water. Just, you know. <laughs> it's a gift. Yes. Receive the gift Amen. that Jesus gave you, the abundant life. Until next time. Receive. Receive. Peace. <laughs>